Wednesday is Talking Reds. I'm Josh Sexton. I'm joined by Rob Gutman today. This is probably a slightly, slightly, slightly strange scenario, Rob, isn't it? Me and you being on one of these on a Wednesday. It's Have usually we, you and Mo, I think. It, it is you and Mo. Mo's just t uh, texted me, actually. I didn't realise he's in London. Yeah. Hi, Mo. He's ditched us, hasn't he? Yeah, he's stitched me <laughs> up. Left, no, left, me to, left me to sit with Rob. <laughs> oh, man. Have we, ever, have we ever done this together? I think we've probably done one together, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, think yeah. I think it was we've got to make it count. over there. So, yeah, we have yeah, to make yeah. it count. Last time we talked about injuries, and I know you've been keen to talk about injuries, but we're going to dodge those this time. We love talking about Because there is big news about other football clubs, Rob. There is. Namely Spurs, who have sacked their manager, Mauricio Pochettino, and they've appointed... Jose Mourinho. Now I know when this broke last night there was a bit of talk in one of our, our group chats about this and maybe some surprise from some people. I, I wasn't particularly surprised at the time to be honest. I could sort of see the logic in bringing a new manager in now, giving him time to work with that squad until the summer. Um, but then mm. they're going to point Jose Mourinho. <laughs> Do you know what? If someone had said to me that morning they're going to sack Pochettino and I know there was a building momentum towards it, I'd have gone, oh, don't do that Spurs. Well, if I, you know, from their perspective. Yeah. He's a great manager going through a bad time, give him time to correct it. But when the news breaks, well, when the news is announced that Mourinho has got the job, I, I suddenly could see it through different eyes and I could see it through Daniel Levy's eyes a bit more. We know Mourinho could fuck up here. Yeah, he, you know, he could be ultra defensive and the fans not get behind it, the team not buy into it. He could continue the slide we've seen from him. But we don't know. We, he's also, you know, he's a, a guy with pedigree and it's a good Spurs squad still. Everywhere you look around that squad, there are good players. And I think he's done that. I think they're going to have a better season now with him than they were going to have with Pochettino. That's the bottom line I think Levy's gone for. And I think this is the thing as well is that I think Pochettino could have either left now or at the end of the season. And I don't see there being another scenario in that. I think that Spurs would have, would have you know, like, as you said, probably kept playing awful for the, for the rest of the season under Pochettino. I think that, that project has sort of run its course. Where I'm a little bit confused is I thought that Daniel Levy would want to go for another project where it's another manager who can, who can do the most with a, with a sort of small amount of money and all the sort of financial stipulations that Spurs have in place. But instead, they've gone for a manager who, you know, historically spends big. And, and I wonder how that's going to work out for Mourinho. It's ballsy by Levy. I'm impressed with this. this is, I mean, Levy would frustrate me if he was ours. Mm. Um, but this, this would be a move I'd be impressed with him for because I thought he'd, do, he'd, he'd go for a cheap project like a Nagelsmann was thrown in the mix, I think, a day or two ago. But this feels like the one... I'm not, I don't think he's necessarily going to throw uh, the, the money at Mourinho that Mourinho is used to. But I think he'll, he, Mourinho will have come on board with promises. So there will be money to spend, I'm sure of it. Um, I think, I think they probably did have to make the, the, the cut with Pochettino the more I think about it because he was becoming, he was linked to every good job going, wasn't yep. he, for the last year. Uh, so, he, so his long-term viability as Spurs manager was in doubt anyway. But a losing version of Pochettino is almost becoming the definition of useless for, for Tottenham. Yep. No longer doing the business and sort of innately disloyal, I suppose. And with Mourinho, the one thing that I'm possibly confused about is that when I expected someone to come in and, and sit calling them a project manager, I expected that to be long term. Do you think Mourinho would be in this Tottenham job for the long term, or do you think it's a bit of a short term fix by then? I was just listening on the radio on the way, it's only a two and a half year contract he's got, I is think. It, yeah. yeah. So, so that would suggest then that. Yeah, I think it's a good get out for both parties, really. So Mourinho. He probably he, he's probably thinking, you're not gonna, just don't sack me, whatever yeah. you do. I don't want my reputation tarnished with a sacking. So at the end of the two and a half years, we can go, it was always planned this way. Mourinho could go, I always wanted to spend more time on my punditry. I think, uh, and the two and a half year clause also gives them an opportunity to go, well, you know, we can develop a long term project, maybe alongside you or, or, or have our eye on someone in the background. I can see how it works well for both parties. And the managerial shiftings leads us into our question from yesterday's Talking Reds, uh, which was asked, would you take Rafa back when Klopp leaves? Obviously, we always ask for a question on Talking Reds and then we answer it the next day. Would you take Rafa back when Klopp leaves? I mean, you're, you know, the question is sort of has to be contextualised about where we are. Mm. If Klopp was to leave now, would I take Rafa back? Absolutely not. Not in, not, not in a heartbeat. Wouldn't think about it for one second. I'm not quite sure who I'd take, but Rafa is not currently at the level we need. I, th I think it assumes that Klopp will, will leave at 2022 in his contract. Yeah, but what I'm getting at is, if we were in disarray, mm. if, we were, if we'd had a really bad run and, and you know, maybe even a season like Klopp's last one at Dortmund, where we suddenly found us at bottom half of the table club for, for much of a season, and we needed someone to correct a slide, who knew the club, etc, etc, then you take Rafa in that circumstance. But I think uh, 
thinking ambitiously as we are at the moment, I wouldn't take Rafa back now. That's interesting. I never thought of it that way. I, I always thought, you know, that would it would just sort of be perfect until Klopp leaves, and then you need <laughs> yeah, to have a natural so. successor like a Pep Linder or someone maybe. But yeah, I suppose if, if it was to who have knows? A bit of a downturn. Yeah, I, you know, we we hope it's seamless. We hope this is the start of a new golden age and that Klopp leaves hands over the reins as Shankly did to a winning team and that someone like Pep Linders or whoever takes on no, the reins in those sense. And Rafa is not the manager to take us on from that point, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, if you've got a question for the Amphir make sure you leave that in the comments below. We'll answer one in tomorrow's video. I'm going to show you a little clip now of a few of the lads from the Amphir went down to the walk in football in Kirby yesterday with the Red Neighbours LFC Foundation scheme. That was Gareth and a few of the other video team as well, so uh, here's a little clip from that. Okay, we are in a freezing cold Kirby this morning for the launch of Red Neighbours Walk and Football in Kirby now. They already did this in Anfield. Uh, they're doing it in Kirby now. Red Neighbours, if you don't know, is a Liverpool FC scheme, getting involved in the community, doing good things, and we're always happy to highlight that at the Anfield Wrap. Uh, the idea is people 50 plus in the community can come along, have a game of football, walk and football, loads of them are cheating and running. Um, Alan Kennedy's playing. Uh, he's He's out there right now, two-time European Cup winner. Um, he's given lots of people lots of stick, it's fair to say. Uh, it is very competitive. We spoke to a couple of the lads uh, who play. We spoke to Shakiri as well, who's down here, uh, back in the launch. So, here's all that. Okay, we're joined by Zed and Shakiri. Uh, good to see you down here this morning. Um, do you think you'll still be playing football at 65? <laughs> I hope so, I hope so. I think uh, they are also a role model for me to, to see them, how, how fit they are and on, on, on their age. So um, I hope I can play too when I'm older than them. I just heard somebody told me one guy is 82 or over, over 90 already one. So it's, uh, it's, it's nice to see and I hope I can be also like them. <laughs> It's not uh, simple that uh, when you when you get older and that you can stay very fit and people just stay sometimes only at home do nothing and that's I don't like this so I'm very happy to see them they, they do something uh, sometimes in football you can achieve a lot of together new to meet new friends also and uh, yeah I, I'm, I'm very happy to to meet them. My name's Sol, um, I'm 83, 84 in December. And you love it? Oh, not off, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I tear up every game. I, I, you know, even when I'm aching and paining, I still come. I won't miss it. Brilliant. And, and what about yourself? Uh, I'm Billy, uh, I'm 74, and uh, I've joined uh, uh, then about 18 months ago. And it's the best thing that ever happened to me because, as I say, um, life's life I've lost my wife the kids are all gone and I used to sit alone seeing this ad on the TV went and it's the best thing that's ever happened to me all the people who are very very respectful all the players Bill Bygrove is excellent Alan Kennedy is excellent and it's just been uplifting experience for, for this time in my life and it, it, it's, it's not just a football, is it? it, it, it it's it, it's it's a group of mates and having a laugh. Yeah, yeah. It's it's exactly that. You know, the camaraderie here is excellent. It's brilliant. They all like each other. And uh, if anyone wants to come, it's an Anfield Breck Road. Anyone sitting there on their own, come. You're welcome. If you can get there, you're good enough to play. Yeah, nice one to Gareth and everyone heading down to that. Good to see you, and Shakiri as well, Rob. Just a bit of inf information on that for you. That takes place every Wednesday at All Saints Catholic High School, Roughwood Drive in Northwood. That is L33 AXF from 2.15 to 3.15, excluding school holidays. Uh, the sessions are free and refreshments are available after each session. And you might spot a Liverpool first team player on your, on your time there as well. But uh, yeah, Shaq is back. Nice to see him on that video. Good to see him back in training as well. Yeah, full training now. I mean, it's been... Has he kicked a ball this season for Liverpool? I don't First think he team. has. I don't think he has. I was thinking about that. Did he come on in the Community Shield? I think he might have come he on He might in the have had a few shield, minutes yeah. there, yeah. Uh, and he, I think he has the calf injury that because he's got 
calves the size of normal people's heads. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it takes, according to Klopp, anyway, it, uh, it takes longer for them, him to recover from. These, if, he, if he comes back and maintains his fitness, and it's always a worry when a player's been out for a while, when they maintain it, um, then he's come at exactly the right time. There's games for Shaq, be it Villa away in the League Cup, or maybe even some action in Qatar, I don't know. You never know. Even I think this weekend would be too soon for him, even for the bench. But um, but I'm really pleased to see him back. I think there's been a bit of speculation while he's been out injured about his his sort of role at the club, particularly going forward as well. And mm. I sort of wonder whether there's an extent to which we've forgotten how good Shakiri can be. I think sometimes when when players get injured, especially when things are going well, you start to sort of question whether they'll ever be able to get back in the team. We've seen it with Lallana and maybe a few other players. I, I think we might have forgotten how good Shakiri can be for us. Yeah, and of those lads who surprised us and come back in, like a region, they say Lalana. I think Shaq has probably the highest ceiling of, the, of, of that set of players. I just happened to be watching on uh, on TV the other day. It was a, a rerun of our our win at Newcastle at the end of last season, and you see him. He comes in there and makes an impact. He makes an impact against Barcelona. It's, it's in our very recent history that he's an important player in our squad. Um, whether how how whether he can start games for us for a good while yet is, is something I don't know. First team Premier League games, I'm not sure about. Uh, but certainly, to, as an asset to have off the bench, that's, that's a major plus. And we've been discussing a few of the other injury problems. I promise we won't talk about it, but I know how much you want to talk about it. There's a few few lads. Just... Yeah, there's a few lads who've come back from the international break and, and we're in training yesterday. So I don't know if it's maybe a bit too early to to try and take you know foregone conclusions from, from what we've seen of the training pitches. I know the club have published them and people want to take what they want to take, but um, there was a few players missing, was there? I believe you know a bit more about it than I do. Well, yeah, the Echo ran a story on it saying that those definitely not in training uh, were Matip, Mo Salah and Andy Robbo and Joe Gomez, but although it was stressed that Joe would be back in training, mm. uh, that there's no problem with his knee. No comments really on, on the likely return dates for the other three. Uh, I think we're anxious particularly about Mo. I think, you know, if Andy Robbo had a game or two out, never good, but we trust James Milner. If he's not quite like for like to do a very, very solid deputy role, missing salary is always going to be an issue. Sorry, Josh, I'm touching your knee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, so I don't know. I mean, we can't tell what happened with Salah's injury, whether it was very much a PR exercise and joining up with the Egyptian team and stressing that he couldn't play, but God, he'd love to, and putting the leg brace on. We can't, I, I still can't tell whether that was something of a stunt. But then again, we're, it's Wednesday today. If he's going to play this weekend or have any chance of playing, he sort of will need to be in training by tomorrow morning at the latest. And you'd imagine tomorrow is when all the Brazilian lads and a few of the lads who've sort of hung around so late will, will be back in training as well. So you'd imagine that's sort of the cut off the clock, if you will, for, for the Crystal Palace game. Yes, I think you're right. I mean, last international break, we had most of the lads, they played their last game on the Monday and then we had a Sunday game, so it was a good break. This is sort of the opposite for some of them finishing on Tuesday and we've got a Saturday. So I think, think we might be... Well, I'm surprised to see quite a number of changes this weekend. I think those who, yeah, Ginny Wijnaldum only played last night, scoring his hat-trick, didn't he? Uh, did Fabinho play last night? Uh, I think he did, yeah. I think he started, which is rare for him. Yeah, so that might be deemed a bit too close to the Palace game. He could get a rest. So it'll be an interesting selection there. Yeah, if you want to hear Rob discussing more of this, of course, you can download our app. If you already like what Rob does and what we do at the Amphire app in, in particular, we've been nominated for the Fan Media of the Year Award at the FSA Awards, so make sure you give us a vote. There'll be a link down in the description for that. And also, it's in the run-up to Christmas now, so Christmas gift cards are back on sale. You can get three months, six months or 12 months if you want to hear more of Rob and maybe a little bit more of me as well. Some more food behind the camera as well. Uh, we're going to have to go because there's about to be 30 million people walking behind us in shot to walk into that room over there. There, so a uh, nice one.